What are the best sectors to work for as a cybersecurity professional? So this is a question that I've had a lot in my head when I was personally looking for a cybersecurity job. One of the big things I was considering was things like, should I work for a big tech company or should I work for a smaller company? Should I work for a finance company or should I work for healthcare? Or maybe should I go into government or defense contractor work? Even considering something like freelancing or contracting. And basically there's just a lot of places that you can take your career when you're going to start out in cybersecurity. And I have made a video in the past on the best places to work in cybersecurity. So if you want to hear basically the pros of a lot of these specific sectors I'm going to list out in this video, then you can check that video linked in my description but today i kind of want to go into the thought process of the best places for you to work if you're someone who is just getting started in cybersecurity and and maybe you aren't sure where exactly to take your career i think starting out with let's say the specific career value of a job security. If you're someone who is looking for job security in cybersecurity, while it is a field known for having a relatively good job security in most roles and in most cases that you go into, I would say that the sectors with the most job security for cybersecurity professionals are likely going to be fintech as well as government contractors slash defense contractors and then maybe healthcare. And the sectors that maybe aren't as good for cybersecurity professionals in terms of job security are startups, freelance slash consulting, and maybe even big tech. So obviously this isn't a comprehensive to the T list. I'm not saying that going to a fan company is going to get you laid off or something as a cybersecurity professional. I'm also not saying that being in fintech as a cybersecurity professional means that you have a job for the rest of your life. These are really just relative things that I've seen across the board as well as with the many, many articles that we have seen on layoffs and things in the job market, even cybersecurity layoffs, where especially we have seen lots of cybersecurity startups specifically let go of large percentages of their staff. So that is something I want you guys to keep in mind. Not every job in cybersecurity is a one size fits all where you always have job security no matter what. And some jobs may be more stable than others depending on the sector you go into. For example, FinTech I think is notorious for having pretty good job security, especially for cybersecurity professionals where, where a lot of big banks and FinTech companies want to keep their cybersecurity professionals because first of all, if they're hired and they're likely good at their jobs and it takes a long time to train up your cybersecurity personnel to know your environment and your network perimeter. So you're likely not going to be, you know, laying off half your cybersecurity team at once. But if you're a startup and you really need money and, and the cybersecurity team, which typically isn't going to be the profit generating team compared to sales and the engineers who actually build the product, then you may be more keen on letting go of your cybersecurity talent compared to a fintech company who likely is going to keep is going to be keeping their cybersecurity employees, especially during economic downturns and recessions where where there may be a lot more cybersecurity attacks related to political slash the nation state side. And even nowadays when we've seen the news with lots of big tech companies laying off large percentages of their staff, whether it be cybersecurity or not, I do think that in general, people have thought of big tech companies as very safe places to go where they're able to work and do a good job and get well compensated for it, as well as having that good job security. But nowadays, with a lot of tech companies going through layoffs and hiring freezes, it may not be the case as much as it was anymore. And not to say that it's always going to stay this way, but I do think it's something to consider that, that while it may have been stable for a very long time, right now it may not be the best time to join a, a big tech company, especially when rounds of layoffs come. It's usually the person who just started that gets laid off in that last in first out kind of scenario. And if you guys are currently looking to get into cybersecurity, I have a course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity that covers everything that I personally use to help me get my first job from my cover letter to resume to my cybersecurity interview prep guide, as well as the overall job application process. And if you're interested in the course, it is linked in my description below. And the next core value is salary. So this one is obviously a very big topic in terms of these sectors that have a big emphasis on cybersecurity professionals, you typically are going to find a lot of high salaries across the board, no matter where you go, especially relative to job roles and titles outside of tech. But I do think that overall, even though there's a lot of news about you know big tech companies having lowering their perks as well as their salaries overall for total compensation for their employees i still think big tech companies do still have that winning streak of being able to pay their cybersecurity professionals the highest salary out there and this is primarily due to the fact that due to the fact that they get performance-based incentives from stock units including their bonuses which are typically going to be high percentages as well as rsus and stock options which really boost up a large percentage of that overall total compensation that an employee is going to get and that's just not something that you typically are going to see in even in a fintech company or in a government agency so all in all tech companies are probably going to be the ones giving you the most 
in terms of compensation but also depending on your certifications and your security clearance status um, government agencies may also be paying you a good amount of money especially if you have a security clearance and depending on the level of your clearance i'm a complete noob with security clearances so I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know everything about them, but I do know that there's different tiers slash levels with security clearances and I believe something along the lines of secret, top secret, and the higher levels are going to be harder to get and more time consuming, but they're also often more sought after and, and valuable from an employer perspective. And you may also be able to negotiate for higher salaries based on your security clearances. And while other sectors like smaller tech companies or fintech companies and healthcare companies, even on the education slash academia side, if you're working for a school or or an academic organization they may be paying on the lower end of the scale for cybersecurity professionals but again this range is still going to be relatively high compared to the u.s median household income because cybersecurity is still a very well-paid field even if you aren't making as much as you know someone who is a security engineer at google so definitely something to keep in mind especially as you're going through your list of options all right the next one specifically i want to talk about cybersecurity startups because i know this one is a risky option for a lot of us, especially during a recession and times of economic downturn. But I do think that startups, the reason why people join them is because of the risk versus reward. For example, if you join a startup that is really popular and when it IPOs, maybe at 10 X's, then you make 10 X your money. And, and while I'm not saying that this is a choice for everybody, I do think that it is an option for those of you who may be looking for that big payout at the end of the day. And of course, if it's in a company that you believe in, I think that's definitely the most important part. You don't want to join a startup just for the itty bitty chance that it might IPO and make you a millionaire or something, because typically just based on statistics, it was like 90 something percent of startups fail and you never know what's going to happen even if things are looking great right now so while i don't think that startups are for the faint of heart but i do think that if you're someone who is passionate about a specific field in cybersecurity and maybe a startup is working on it um, i know there's a lot of blockchain security companies that are popping up nowadays and again i'm not an expert in blockchain or or blockchain security so so obviously i can't answer very many questions on that but i do know that it's a very hot topic right now and there could be huge payouts down the line if you're able to stick along and really feel attached to the company mission and the chances that the startup does succeed then there definitely is a much bigger risk versus reward compared to just working for a typical salary with normal rsus instead of getting stock options and of course this also goes into the realm of freelancing or consulting or contractor work um this is definitely something i've considered personally as a way to take my career down the line but essentially it's really just working for yourself or if you're a contractor then it's either part-time or a limited time contract so if you're working for six months or nine months the main perk of being able to work as a freelancer or a contractor is the fact that you are more flexible in terms of your working hours of course depending on the role in the company but some contracts allow you to work part-time or they allow you to work from different locations across the world that don't require you to be in an office setting or in a specific country and then of course with freelancing you kind of work on your own terms and your own hours you have your own clients but of course there's also risk there where if you don't go out and reach and look for the work yourself then you don't get paid and you don't get the work so there's always that risk and reward but on the upside you may be really good at what you do and clients may be willing to pay you more for your expertise compared to a typical employee who may be working a normal salary so it's all just about give and take but i do think that these are career options to consider especially for those of you who are looking for a more flexible work environment that may be more suitable for you that isn't just working nine to five or working a specific set of hours every single week and of course it could be a great side hustle as well for those of you who may be working full-time and maybe want to do something on the side that is a personal project or as a source of extra income basically i've gone through my entire list of different types of sectors that you might want to go into except one and just to recap because i didn't go through them all in order i kind of placed them into the different categories that i thought they fit better in um, but for the most part it is big tech companies government agencies or defense contractors fintech companies healthcare companies startups education slash academia which is basically just colleges universities and things like that freelancing and consulting slash contractor work and the last one that I haven't discussed yet is, is smaller to medium tech companies. So there's a lot of smaller, medium-sized companies. They don't have to be tech companies specifically, but I kind of added tech in there because they're more likely to have some kind of SaaS product or offering that companies want to buy, and they're likely going to need a cybersecurity team. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a tech company. And smaller to medium size, I'm typically thinking for around less than 500, less than 1,000 employees. A medium size, maybe less than 5,000 employees. I think even companies less than 10,000 employees are considered 
medium size, but I don't exactly know. Let me know in the comments below if you know the exact number ranges for what qualifies as a medium size as a medium size company. Um, but if you have a few thousand employees, I would consider it a pretty a pretty big medium sized company. Personally, I currently work for a, a relatively small tech company, and I really enjoyed my time working here. I think it really does have kind of the best of both worlds, where there's job security. I'm not saying that I obviously not at the level where I am a Supreme Court justice and you know not ever worried about my job security at all. There's definitely always a risk no matter what job you work that there's going to be a risk of losing your job due to a layoff or a recession or things like that. And then another part of it is salary where they do pay relatively good salaries. It's again not at the fang level but it's also not on the lower end or the lower range especially if you're joining a company that has some kind of SaaS product and already has paying customers and clients and even better if it's profitable. Not every company is going to be profitable at this level but but as long as there's some kind of path to get there and you feel and you can see that kind of growth trajectory in the next few years then that probably is a good sign that, that it is a good company to join as well as the fact that lots of smaller companies maybe pre-IPO which means they haven't IPO'd yet or maybe they just recently IPO'd and, and I think both of these could be beneficial in a way where you still have a little bit of that risk versus reward and you're able to kind of grow in your career and have a chance of the company going public and maybe having the stock do well but it's not as risky as a startup where maybe they've only been operating for a few years and and it's not as stable compared to a small to medium-sized company with already a few hundred employees and and likely aren't going to go under within the next few years it's also a great place to learn and grow because of the fact that because it's a smaller company you likely also have a smaller cybersecurity team and with that you can also just and with that even your older career you can make a huge impact and just get to work on projects that you wouldn't normally be able to work on in a bigger company where no one would trust you with that kind of responsibility um at least from what i've seen so yeah i really think personally i've learned a lot i've grown a lot and i've only been working here for a little less than a year which is crazy to say that um just about 10 months to be honest and yeah i think it was definitely a great choice for my career i learned a lot i'm working with awesome teammates and an awesome manager so i think overall it's not to say that i'm going to work here for the rest of my life but i do think that it's definitely one of the best work experiences that i've ever had so and that's saying a lot coming from me. and yeah so basically that is kind of like my two cents from what i've seen in my relatively short career um almost four years now actually about three and a half years i guess just working in cyber security and just seeing you know the kind of roles the kinds of roles that are out there um the kinds of sectors that are hiring for cyber security their salary their job security um the risk versus reward of them i really do think that the smaller to mid-size SaaS companies are are a pretty good place to be that is at the intersection of all three of those things. All right, so hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. But this month I am posting every single day for the month of December, unless I am no longer able to, but, but you guys will know if that happens. Thank you guys so much again for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.